In this area, it's very hard to capture homelessness because you don't see them on the street like you do in the bigger cities. We have no short-term emergency housing per se. We don't have a homeless shelter. We don't have a place where a family can go. When families call and they are in crisis, the only thing I can offer them is to go on the waiting list for nine months to a year. When you're in crisis, you're not going to wait nine months to a year. Nancy McKenzie is the executive director of the Rhinelander Housing Authority. She understands the housing issues facing low-income families in the North Woods as well as anyone. Her organization offers housing options for families residing within the Rhinelander city limits. We have Evergreen Manor, which is a 50-unit public housing building for the elderly and disabled. And we also run what's called the Housing Choice Voucher Program, otherwise known as Section 8 for the city limits of Rhinelander. And we just opened up a new building called Historic West, which is affordable housing for people 55 and older. Each housing program is based on the income of the prospective person or family and how that income compares to the county median income. Why I called Historic West affordable housing is we take 30, 40, 50, and 60% of the county median income of a family. In public housing, you must be about 30% of the county median income. For the Section 8 program, you must be extremely low income or low income to, be, to qualify for the program. For the Section 8 program, it's usually about $8,000. For Evergreen Manor, it's higher. For Historic West, our cap is $23,040 for one person. If you live in Rhinelander, are under the age of 55, and are not disabled, the only program choice you have is the Housing Choice Voucher Program, also known as Section 8. Many younger people are able to find jobs in the bustling summer economy of a popular vacation destination setting. But when the leaves are done falling and weather turns colder, a much different reality sets in. Because we're a service industry, and because people are either, their hours are cut or laid off in the winter time is, is the increase that we receive in our office. How can they afford the rent? Um, during the summertime, it's not an issue when they're working full time, but then when the, the hours start to decrease, it becomes a large issue in all of Oneida County. There's two loans out there that through WIDA, which is the Wisconsin Housing and Economic Development Age Authority, and also USDA, which is um, the Guaranteed Rural Housing Development and these programs work real well, well for first-time home buyers due to the fact that they do offer a lower rate. They offer 100% financing to qualified buyers. It is difficult to find the proper home for this um, to be affordable. You know, um, a lot of people, uh, when you're first-time home buying, they're usually qualified for 100,000 or less. Um, sometimes, you know, only 60,000. And to find a qualified home at that price range is real difficult. Another issue that makes it harder for low-income families to find housing in Rhinelander is the cost itself. Many people think the typical rental price is too high. I do see a lot of rents that are too high for people to be able to afford with the incomes that they are living on. The tax base is higher than normal, so landlords, of course, want to be able to afford to have the rentals so they increase the rent appropriately, or not appropriately in some people's opinion, and the rents become too high. We have in Oneida County one of the highest payment standards compared to Madison, Milwaukee, um, because, our, because our rentals and what are charged for rentals in the city limits of Rhinelander are so high. Rent is still you know, pretty high here, even for like a one bedroom, and, and I have like a one and a half but um, very, very small. The Rhinelander Housing Authority works closely with the Forward Service Corporation, another local agency that helps low-income people living in the North Woods find housing. To be eligible, they have to document the fact that they are homeless. And if there's any income coming into the household, they need to verify that. We have 40 slots in an eight-county area. With the supportive housing program, um, Forward Service pays the, uh, the landlord the full amount of rent and then our participants pay um, based on their income. 30% of their income go goes toward what we call program fees. 
A partnership with United Way helps forward services keep people in their homes when a crisis arises. It is a prevention dollars. So if someone is at risk of losing their housing, have an eviction notice, or are past due on their rent, we can take that and pay one month's rent so that they're not evicted. So it's prevention dollars through United Way. People receiving housing assistance often face a grim reality in the spring if their utility bills are overdue. I receive housing assistance. I was informed by the head of the Rhinelander Housing Authority if my gas and electric had been terminated, my housing assistance would have been terminated, would have made me homeless again. In the springtime when people are uh, getting in threat of disconnect, if the grant can help them stay connected or get them reconnected, we can pay for one month of utility bill for them. Making sure new applicants meet government housing program guidelines is one thing. But working with those applicants and their families once they're already receiving benefits is quite another. We do case management where we go into the participants' homes and, you know, when they're first starting out in the program, it's like once a week to help them get more stable, to hopefully, you know, learn them some skills. We do budgeting, we do assessments with them so that hopefully they're work ready if they're not already employed. There's support services as well where we can do a little bit of uh, transportation if, you know, they need gas money to get to work. There's a little bit of education, a little bit of medical, not a whole lot in those areas, but we do um, do some support services. And if we're not able to, through our budgeting, then we try to refer and find resources for them. The lack of a homeless shelter is frustrating to housing program providers like Lori Hallis and Nancy McKenzie. But another forward services program picks up some of the slack with another program that we have, uh, it's called the State Shelter Subsidy Grant, we're able to put them into a hotel up to three nights. So if they're absolutely no place to go, no one to turn to, we do have that option as well. Forward Services is able to offer its housing programs through four grants that have to be renewed annually. But as housing costs, like everything else, continue to rise, grant dollars remain the same. Funding isn't always available. When we work with United Way and FEMA, you know, we get funded right around in March and by, and we're spent out already for FEMA and United Way. Currently, I think we're at a standstill. They're not increasing. Supportive housing uh, will not increase. Whenever we reapply, it's the same budget every year.